Apparently, you just run for an extended period of time. I've got a heck of a lot better use for a treadmill than that. Hi, I'm Dave. This is Hemi Garage Hacks, and uh, so I'm going to talk to you today about something that I created to level head. So, first, I'm going to talk about a uh, blown head gasket. Whether you're familiar with vehicles or whether you're not, you've heard the term blown head gasket. I'm going to take a quick second and tell you exactly what that means. Okay, this is a cylinder head here, it sits on top of the engine block. In between the two is a head gasket. Here's the head. Here's the gasket itself. The car overheats, then the head itself will get warped. Especially since it's aluminum, the heat just causes it to disform. And so what will happen is it won't be flat here anymore. And then it'll, it'll allow gaps. And then that gap, because of compression, will actually blow away part of the gasket. It can blow away between two cylinders and then make it so that you have low compression, which means it'll run rough, or it can blow between the cylinder and a water jacket where all the antifreeze is, because the antifreeze comes around here and it cools the cylinders. So that's kind of a breakdown of what it is. Now, whenever we tear down a motor, what we do is we take the heads off. Obviously this head has not been built yet, is we'll just clean off this section here and we'll take a straight edge and we'll see if it's warped. Now we've already done that with this one and uh, this one is warped. So we will be milling this one. So I'm gonna grab my straight edge and I'm gonna show you real quick how we do this. Okay, so this is a straight edge. It has an edge that has been perfectly machined to be straight. So you can measure other surfaces against this to see if it's straight or not. So we'll actually lay this across here. Then I have here a thousandths inch feeler gauge. So this is so thin, you would actually have to stack about 12 of these on top of each other just to be the thickness of a business card. So what we'll do is we'll take this and if it goes underneath, then it's blown. On the ends, it usually doesn't blow. See how it doesn't go through? But now it's all blown all the way in through here. So if this head is put back onto a motor, reassembled and started up, it's gonna run like crap. It's probably gonna smoke. Uh, it may not even start. It just won't have enough compression to run. So that's kind of the background of a blown head gasket, what happens and how we check it. So now I'm gonna tell you about how I repurposed the treadmill and why I did it. So when I first started, I would send out all my heads to be built and get machined and then get resurfaced. And I just kind of got tired of waiting on it. And I was like, there's gotta be a, a better way to do this. And so I was looking on YouTube and I saw a guy who took a piece of sandpaper and he taped it to his kitchen table and he took the head and he was going back and forth like this. And I'm sure it probably worked. 60% of the time, it works every time. And maybe if the kitchen table was really flat, but if it wasn't, you're kind of screwing yourself up a little bit. And I thought, well, for what I do, we do a lot of heads. There's just no way I can sit there and do it manually. It's gonna take forever. And sometimes these heads really get warped. So I thought, well, why couldn't you just take a treadmill and then put sandpaper on it and have it do that? And so just gave it a shot. So I found a treadmill on uh, Craigslist or Facebook or something like that. It was great because <laughs> all I did is I cut the belt off and I had a perfect measurement of what I needed. And then I found a company that creates sand belts, any length, any grit, any width, which was perfect. So about three weeks later, I got some belts in and then I matched it to the treadmill that I had at the time. And I have a different version now, but my very first one worked great. So then it was just a matter of trying to figure out how to make sure that everything would be true. For their milled, it's got to pass the test. You got to be able to put a straight edge on it. And this thousandth inch feeler gauge can't be passing through it. So we want it to be perfect. So here we are at the mill. Uh, a couple of things you might notice right away. First of all, yes, it's on a gurney. Long story with that one. You can tell it's a treadmill. This was actually a little motor that uh, allows the treadmill to incline. Now my first version of the treadmill, I had a lighter weight uh, treadmill and it was fine, but it felt like I had to support some of the weight of the head when I was milling the head. Uh, so what I did is I got a little bit of a beefier. So this is like a bariatric treadmill. It's one for a little bit heavier people. Just got a little bit stronger motor put on it. 
Uh, this is the sandpaper here. So uh, what I did last night, I actually uh, went ahead and changed the paper last night and just for fun, uh, which you'll see here in a little bit, went ahead and just kind of painted a couple things uh, and showed a little bit how we put it together. To have a stop here at the end so that I don't have to hold the head in the exact spot. I can let it rest up against here and then I can move it back and forward so that it can get smooth. And then I've got this wrench in my hand because this allows me to adjust here, here, and here because the belt itself, if you have these rollers, if they're crooked at all, the belt's gonna walk this way. Or if it's crooked, the belt's gonna walk this way. So they've gotta be straight. So this allows me to make adjustments. And then of course, this is my power switch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the head that I just showed you that was, that was blown. I'm gonna mill it about halfway, just so you can see how much of it actually uh, gets milled before it starts to make the entire surface flat. I'll go ahead and turn the machine on, and then I'll grab this other head, and then we'll mill. Okay, so here's the head I was telling you about, and you can tell we measured it. Uh, it's dirty all around here, so I'm gonna turn the mill on. I'm gonna go ahead and mill it for about, I don't know, maybe 20 seconds or so. I'm gonna set it right back here, and then you'll get an idea about how it's leveling out. So here we go, we're about halfway done. You can tell that it was warped before because the part that's getting milled is this on the outside. So what's happening now as we mill it, this is gonna come down a little lower to where it's all flat and it'll be true. And then we'll do a test again after that. Okay, so here we go. This is a brand new belt. What I'm gonna do is I've got five other heads here that I'm gonna mill. Uh, whenever I'm breaking in a new belt, it takes a couple of heads uh, for the finish to smooth out. Just to check where we're at right now, I'm gonna grab the straight edge and see where we're at and see how we're doing. To get my uh, straight edge here, um, I always keep it hanging. When one office worker, who shall remain nameless, kicked the ladder off from under me and yelled, Hey Daryl, how's it hanging? We need these tolerances to be pretty accurate. So we're just going to check this here. Here. Can't go through. Go through. Go through. Go through. Here, you can even go crossways. Do the same thing. So worked great. Everything's uh, straight and true. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these five other heads. I'm gonna go ahead and mill all those in time-lapse, and then we'll see what the last one looks like. So here we have granite and glass. The granite gives us good structure so it doesn't bend under the weight of the head, and the glass gives us an area to shim if we need to make any adjustments at all. So it works great. We straight edge every head after we mill it, it's perfect. The heads, and then sometimes we'll mill heads for other people also been times where I had a customer that had, let, let's say, a 6.4 intake and they had gotten it hot and it got warped. You could actually set that on the mill and then uh, take a Dremel for some of the, <clears throat> the grooves where the intake gaskets would go. Save the intake, so save them from having to buy an intake. So, And I put some wood on here before when I wanted to sand some wood or if I had a part I wanted to machine, I just put it on here. How'd you do that? Hi. It's actually, I'm not even mad. That's amazing. <laughs> Now get yourself a clothes hanger. Nope, not that one, the fancy one. Yeah, that's the one. Now disassemble treadmill and cut and make sure to measure your belt. Now get yourself a gurney, preferably one without a body on it. Then just clean and paint it. Now assemble it. Team, assemble! All 
Now you might have noticed we actually have two mills here. This one is for the cylinder heads. The other one has a pretty aggressive uh, sandpaper on there and we use that to mill exhaust manifolds because they get warped real bad. So, And uh, we have several more inventions that we're going to be showing uh, and some really good content. So if you like this kind of stuff, then uh, you're probably really going to like this video right here. I'm Ron Burgundy. And you stay classy, San Diego. And uh, this is Dave with uh, Hemi Garage Hacks. We'll see you on the next one.